land to land and down the mountainside. The summer's gone and all the flowers are dying. Tis you, tis you must go and I must buy. But come ye back when summer's in the meadow, or when the valley's hushed and white with snow. Tis I'll be here in sunshine or in shadow. Oh, darling boy, I love you so. And when you come, and all the leaves are dying, and though I'm dead, as dead I will may be, you come and And all my grave will warm sweetly, and you will bend and tell me that you love me, and I shall sleep in peace until you come to me. Yes, I. Please feel free to come in. <clears throat> Splinters in his hands, the thorns of his profession wait to be removed. A dream comes to life under his hands and takes shape. Satisfaction reigns. He creates beauty, wood yields to his artistry, a carpenter's hands. Good morning, my name is Julie Duffy and today along with the staff from Stephen Bagg's Funeral Directors, I will assist the Cam family to say farewell to their dearly loved family member. If you can't hear, just come in a little bit closer. We might be saying our goodbyes to David today, but we're also celebrating our joy in having known and loved him and we will be giving thanks for all that he was and all that he gave. I ask at this time that you please ensure your mobile phones are turned off. Following the service here at the cemetery, you are all warmly invited to the Little River Inn where the family have arranged for light refreshments and a cup of tea. There is a changing of the guard in Ensay. In the past three weeks, many of you would have gathered to attend funerals here for other locals that have passed. Tread softly when you walk through this cemetery for it's holy ground. A mind attuned to the quietness can catch the muffled sound of all the prayers and goodbyes that have been expressed here. David, or Pa as he was known in his family, chose to rest here for all of time in this wonderful community that's perched high above the rest of the world. 
it truly is a place of peace and quiet and a place where tomorrow you can stand in solitude and think about those that have gone before us. In his lifetime, David was a loved and loving husband to Beth, a wonderful dad to Christine, Diane and Peter, and a father-in-law, but more importantly, a mate to Ken and Shane, and a loving pa to nine, and a great grandfather to 18, all because two people fell in love. When you're a local and can enter into a care facility with other locals watching over you, it takes the emptiness that can come with entering a residential home away. David's family would like me to publicly thank the good folk that looked after David in Lewington House and in the Omeo Hospital. To the staff and the cleaners, the kitchen hands, the personal carers and the medical team, thank you. Your genuine care and professionalism was not unnoticed by his family. David John Cam was born on Tuesday, the 21st of January, 1936 at the Bairnsdale Hospital, the second born child to Mary and George Cam. He joined an older sister, Mary, and in the years to follow, they would welcome another daughter, Joyce, and then Stephen, who completed the family. His father, George, was a carpenter, and these skills would be handed down to his son. This was an incredibly tough time in the history of Australia, and in fact, the world. It was not long after the First World War and it was a time of great poverty in the midst of the Great Depression. A child or indeed an adult of the Great Depression had to make decisions for their family just to survive. It was a time of frugality, a time of never wasting anything and there were some traits that people took on that they never lost for their entire lives. To know the true meaning of hunger and need, not want, leaves a mark on your personality and your soul for all of time. In 1939, it was also the year of outbreak of the Second World War and David's father, George, did what another 100,000 or more men did. He left his home, left his wife and took up the cause. David would attend the Bruthen State School and was certainly fortunate to be able to attend the Bensdale Technical School. David grew up in a musical family his father taught him to play the piano by ear and in time he would teach himself to play the banjo, the piano, the piano accordion, the mouth organ and indeed the spoons. At a young age he left school and took up an apprenticeship with his father as a carpenter. It was around this time that he met a young lady from Tambo Crossing who was boarding with the local police officer's family in Bruthen while she attended Bensdale High School. Her name was Elizabeth, Elizabeth Ethel Davidson, known to all of you as Beth. The apprenticeship did not last very long. Family law tells us that there was a family disagreement and the 17 year old David left home and his job and moved to Tambo Crossing. It really was a young love that lasted a lifetime. Beth and David married in Bairnsdale and their first marital home was Beth's parents' place who owned the Tambo Crossing pub. It was to the hotel that they welcomed their first child, a daughter Christine, in 1956. An opportunity arose for the little family of three to move to Ensay and work as a carpenter was plentiful. They had a series of rented homes. David played football for a short time for NSA and then cricket. Sport is a great way of getting to know people and socialising when you move. They then welcomed Peter to the family in 1960, followed by Diane in 1964. David was kept busy. He assisted in the building of the netball courts in NSA. He worked on many private homes over the years. He built shearing sheds and outbuildings. His handiwork is actually with us today. In time, the Cam family bought a cottage at Old Inn Road in Ensay. This has been David's home for many years. The kids attended the Ensay State School and then the Swifts Creek Elementary School. Weekends, they piled into the car and drove to the town that would be hosting the Saturday night dance. David and Beth could certainly cut a rug. The kids would be sent to the car with a blanket and told to go to sleep, and that's what they did. Can you imagine doing that these days? and the kids became more independent, Beth was able to return to the workforce and assisted in the running of the home. 
She worked at the local NSA post office and the pub as a cleaner. And for some time she worked at the Swifts Creek Bakery and also did the mail run. Quite often David would work, travel for work to Meetung or W Tree and camp for a week and return home to Beth and the kids for the weekends. David didn't have a lot of leisure time. However, he did join the NSA Angling Club for the social aspects and enjoyed his annual break on the Bulls Cruises. In the mid 2000s, Beth was diagnosed with dementia and David was her rock. He cared for her until he was no longer able to. It was with much sadness to him that Beth became a resident at Lewington House. She did need professional care. David visited regularly and missed her dearly. Beth passed away in 2007. In recent years, he's been more content to work from his shed, making repairs to antique furniture, lathing table legs and decorative timbers and making new furniture. He was clever and he was talented. In March of last year, David had an accident and he was admitted to the Omeo Hospital. It was identified that he would benefit from some caring and so he became a resident at Lewington House. David Cam, a man who could t turn a piece of 2 before into a thing of beauty, passed away at Omeo on the 19th of January 2023. A wise man once said that grandfathers are the voices of the past and role models of the present. They open the doors to the future and they bring a balance to our lives and our families. I now invite two of David's grandsons to come forward and share with us some of their special stories. Thank you, John and Sean. Hello, um, I'm uh, very honoured uh, today to be able to um, speak on behalf of Mum, um, Diane. Um, she's uh, written some very kind words about uh, her past with Pa and I'd like to uh, share those with you now. Dad, you were the best. You brought us up to do our best. Honesty was on top of your list. Hard work was next, which in the end is what got you in the end. Working was your life. You loved what you did and you were so good at it. We are forever grateful for all the care you gave mum when she became ill. I will never forget sitting at the pub in your corner having a sarsaparilla while you drank your beer. At my wedding, you always said, bloody horses, dangerous at both ends and rough in the middle. But you know what? You never complained once about riding in the horse and buggy with me to my wedding. During the fires, which was a very hard time, we came up through Dargo to pick you up from Omeo. We did this because we cared for you. Uh, we didn't do this um, to kidnap you, which is what you told the local community. Dad, no more long trips up to see you, which I loved and I look forward to so very much. One of the last conversations we had, I said to you, Dad, I will stay up the night and come and see you in the morning, as always. Your answer was straight to the point. No, bugger off home. Look after yourself and your family. I will be fine. Now you're on your long trip to be with mum. She will be waiting for you. I will, be, I will try and be strong, Dad, because that's what you would want. But I will miss you with all my heart. Rest now, Dad. We love you, Pa. Pa, 
Going to your place and Anna's place on the weekends was always seen as a treat for Justin and I. But really we were collecting a lot of fond memories and life's lessons. Pa, you always came out of the, the blue mist that was forming in the morning that was Nana cooking bacon and eggs, perfectly dressed in the khaki, bisley pants or hardyaka pants, and the flannel shirt, perfectly all tucked in, perfectly ironed, and hair beautifully styled, not a hair out of place, probably with the help of lashings of brill cream. Ah, you would always come home, not a hair out of place. Pa used to always greet me with things like, what are you doing, bloody Rastus, and, and re references to skite and all sorts of things. And in recent years, Pa, your greeting changed to, geez, you've been in a good paddock. But they're the things I'm never gonna forget. Pa, I did work experience with you in year nine. And I mucked around your shed weekend after weekend and you taught me so many amazing woodworking skills that now to this day, I'm put into use to renovate my house. You taught me one skill that Melanie hates the most and that is to measure about five times, cut once, and then chuck it in the bin because it's not perfect. The only thing that Melanie wished that you had taught me was how to finish the job. Good at starting. Pa, I never got sick of you telling me the story about the Kingswood and coming home from Bansdale and um, those young bucks thought they'd give you a drag. This old bloke in this old panel wagon, this old wagon. And you took great pride of burying the foot into the floor and showing them how the King's Wood would do it. And I never got sick of that story. I always enjoyed telling you, Pa, how I'd bought another Ford. And I saw you a couple of weeks ago and I held your hand and I told you that I bought another Ford. And I know you heard me because you gave my hand the most God almighty tight squeeze that I've ever felt. So rest in peace, Pa. Those life lessons that you've taught me and that model that you have shown me, I will endeavour to show my own children and their good children. Um, just reading something that my mother wrote for her. Um, well, Dad, this is goodbye. We still had a few things to do, like go fishing and drive around the Angoras, but we run out of time. I still have memories of our time together, though. Driving to Bensdale, you sitting in the passenger side saying, you could go a bit faster, you know. <laughs> or spraying thistles with you on the ride on mower, pulling the spray tank, me walking, dragging the hose. You would turn around with a big grin on your face and say, you missed one. Having me walk up and down the hill when you were pumping water, checking the right taps we were on, laughing, <laughs> putting the nets on the fruit trees. So many memories to keep. But it's time to put down the hammer now and hang the saw on the wall and put the nail bag in the drawer. Remember I told you not to climb the ladder? Well, Dad, now you can climb as high as you like. Say hello to Mum for me. Love you, Dad. Mr O'Brien from the uh, NSA Cemetery Trust would just like to say a few words. Uh, good morning everyone, I'm Stephen O'Brien representing the NSA Cemetery Trust. On behalf of the Trust, I'd like to extend our condolences to the CAM family at this tough time. But I'd also like to extend that to the general NSA community 
that, that there'd be very few houses, sheds and things in Ensoe that Dave, has, Dave Cam hasn't worked on. Dave has worked at the Ensoe Cemetery for four to five decades, 40 to 50 years, could be more. He worked on the front fence down the front here and the brickwork and the gates. Only recently he said to Philip that um, a few decades of drought and a couple of wet years, one of the posts has a lean of three to four millimetres. We better keep an eye on it. The niche wall, which is right here, he's going to keep a close eye on that one. And the rotunda behind us were also Dave's uh, work. And the work inside that uh, rotunda, the roof work, is a work of art. He worked alongside Tom Cook and set up the first lawn, set, lawn cemetery section down, right down the bottom. He worked hard on the plaques to organise uh, in the lawn in the cemetery section down there. The plaques are, are glued to a concrete slab, and when the ground gets wet, the slab keeps going down. So Dave would lift the thing up, put some sand under it, so we could mow the lawn. So that was really hard work. Um, you had to make it smooth for the lawnmower. He encouraged us to try uh, the, the concrete beam, which he, um, he poured, and he's done these ones. And then since we haven't had Dave to do it, we've got the concrete ones up the back that we bring in with a crane from uh, Benstar. We've got Chris who digs the greys and Lenny and Bill who cut the grass and the rest of us that work here. We all need to remember that Dave's down there or up there and he's got a couple of things. We have to get it centred and flush, level and square and millimetre accurate. Rest easy, Dave. Your work is done. Thank you. David's family have chosen the next piece of music just for a few minutes of reflection, but more Im importantly, a moment to say thank you to their dad. Oh, 
showing me good from bad. I guess I don't really try to say thank you for being my dad. Even though the years drift away, I never took the time just to say. How special is that? Ladies and gentlemen, please join me as we say together the words of the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. One thing we can be certain of today is that David would not want you to remember him in sadness, but rather in laughter and with a smile on your face and a thought to the good and the happy moments in his life. And he had many of those. Along with our sadness at David's death, we try and find something to be glad about at this time. We are glad that he is no longer suffering and that his tired body is at peace. We are glad for the joys that David had and for the fullness of his life. We are glad for having known him and for the things that he gave us and the things that he taught us. We are glad he played a part in our lives and the next time that we drive past the netball courts, we will remember his contribution. And for me today, the next time I drive past the cemetery gates, will remember his contribution to community. David, with your family and friends gathered, we have brought you here to your last resting place. You now become part of the history of who your family is and you are reunited with your Beth for all of time. This, this cemetery is a history of people, mainly local people from Ensay, your home. When you all leave here, walk slowly and read the familiar names of people that are at rest here. Some of them may be your family members or your neighbours or your acquaintances. There is a rich tapestry of the history of Ensay. God, by whose mercy the faithfully departed find rest in sadness at his death, but with gratitude for his life. Here in this last rite, we commit David John Cam's body to you and to the earth that sustained and nourished him for many years. David will now become part of this place for all of time. Through the warmth of summer and the cold of winter, through the freshness of spring and the midst of autumn, he will be at peace. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, earth to earth. Rest peacefully, David, you're now home. And may Beth be waiting on the first moonbeam to show you the way.
Ladies and gentlemen, you are reminded that you are kindly and warmly invited back to the inn to have a cup of tea with the family. Thank you for attending today.